welcome back to another video reaction um today i'm going to be reacting to the falling of world war ii um this was suggested by lone brago man so um, i hope i'm pronouncing the name correctly forgive me if i'm not i haven't I don't, I don't know what this video is about but i'm guessing it's about um the falling of okay I'm guessing it's about people who died in World War Two. Maybe I don't know if it's like famous people or just random people, but I don't, it's it's most likely going to be about people who died in World War Two. So um, going into this one, I don't know what to expect at all. But let's just get into it. The average lifespan of an American is 80 years, and an 80-year-old today was 10 when World War II ended, or when it began. Huh. A soldier who saw battle would have to be in his late 80s at least today. Generals, political leaders, the decision makers of the war, you are still with us. And over the past few decades, we've seen authors and filmmakers rush to capture stories from survivors. Before this connection of memory is lost. Yes. This project is not about individual war stories, and it's not about survivors. We're going to tally up the tens of millions of people whose lives were cut short by the war, and see how these numbers stack up to other wars in history, including trends in recent conflicts. Okay. Military and civilian. We'll be counting soldiers and civilians separately. Each of these figures represents 1,000 people who died. Civilians were of all walks of life. Each Whereas military deaths were almost entirely men. The average age was about 23. In most battles, for every 1,000 soldiers killed, there are more than 1,000 who are injured. The word casualty can be confusing. Because in military speak, it often includes both deaths and injuries, and anything else that takes a soldier out of service. Here, okay. we're just counting the deaths. And we'll begin with American soldiers. That's 1,000 for each person. Over 400,000 died. 400 just Most like that. in the European theater, fighting the Nazis. About a quarter were in the Pacific, fighting the Japanese. When you put them on the timeline, you see that casualties were the heaviest at the end of the war. The war began on September 1st, 1939. But the U.S. wasn't willing to join the fight until Pearl Harbor, two years ago. The deaths increased drastically on D-Day, when the Allies invaded Normandy. One of the most tragic moments of the war was on D-Day at Omaha. Where 2,500 Americans died. Okay, I've seen this picture before. So about the same number of U.S. soldiers died on this single beach land as the entire 13 years of the recent war in Afghanistan. Lives. Lives. The bloodiest battle in the Pacific was Okinawa, which lasted 82 days, during which 12,500 Americans died. And these are probably real pictures. About Most likely real pictures. Deaths were at sea from kamikaze attacks. Now let's look at some other countries, starting with Europe. One thousand for each person. I'm trying to to mentally calculate, and my Germany brain isn't wrapping Poland around it. When it invaded Poland, Poland ultimately lost two hundred thousand soldiers in the war. Most died after the invasion, while the country was occupied by Germany and the Soviet Union. I didn't know that. Germany, meanwhile, lost just 16,000 people. most died towards the end of the war. The Nazis went on to invade and conquer other countries, including Denmark, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, oh, Greece, Greece, Yugoslavia. France surrendered, but after losing 92,000 soldiers in the Battle of France, over 200,000 ultimately fell, which includes deaths in POW camps, French colonies, and other places. Yugoslavia suffered almost half a million military deaths. The initial invasion brought relatively few casualties on both sides. But 
But the deaths mounted under Nazi occupation due to guerrilla fighting, civil conflict, and mass executions. Mass, mass executions gave that Nazi high number? Swift, with relatively few German losses. Even the Nazi commanders expressed surprise at their success. For the time being. And then we have the United Kingdom and the United States, who were not invaded but took the fight to the Nazis. Britain lost about the same number of soldiers as the U.S., which includes the British colonies. Germany lost about half Wait, the... you said the British colonies, okay. Well, that should include the um, countries that, um, you know, that the British were, like, ruling in that period, which includes African countries too, and non-African countries. So all were kind of, kind of counted together. Million soldiers okay. fighting the U.S. and Britain what is known as the Western Front, which took place in France and Belgium. I actually like the way he's analyzing this. But most Nazi soldiers died in the Eastern Front. Germany's unsuccessful invasion of the Soviet Union. Look. Numbers <laughs> it's hard to... Oh my god, my brain. Look front, at the numbers the here. Of European war was Stalin. German 6th Army successfully took Stalin, but then got surrounded by the Soviets and cut off from food and ammunition. Half a million Nazis would ultimately die in Stalin. Can this Another happen again? Prisoner, I hope not. Of which 6, would ever POWs had a is this a real picture? And it was particularly or is this like a movie? When you include these POWs, roughly the same number of Germans died in Stalingrad as all the Western Front fighting against France and the UK. And though Stalingrad was a victory for the Soviets, they suffered almost twice as many losses as Germany. Twice. The Soviet Union would eventually defeat the once unstoppable German army, killing 2.3 million Nazi soldiers. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this. Look at these figures. I keep trying to remember he said a thousand for each person shown here. That is so high. You know, reading two books in history, you just read over the the numbers. Oh, 25,000 people died here. 2,500 people died here. 365,000 people died here. They're just like statistics. But looking at this, you can actually as a figure it in your mind, like this is 25,000 people died here it means 25,000 people, like lives, people with hopes and dreams, people that, that's like 25,000 women gave birth to babies that were bound to die at some point. 25,000 lives wasted and then look at this one, this current one here, that is still counting, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand for each person. It's still going. Why? 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 Why do men do this to themselves? Why do we do this to ourselves? Are these events so unresolvable that we just had? <sighs> it's still counting. Why? 8.7 million is the official tally by the Russian military. 8.7 million lives. Some studies lives, guys. As many as <sighs> Look at how high. Look at that yellow. I, when that yellow was counting, I was thinking that's a lot compared to the other ones. Look at the red line. Okay, this one is going high too. It's not. It's not even up to half of that. It's not even up to half of, well to half of the red line. When you put these European military deaths on the timeline, it looks like this. You can now interact with the chart to learn more. Pause the narration if you'd like more time. I'd like to check this maybe after the video for Windows.io frontal application. And now we switch to civilian deaths in Europe. Oh, 
we're just we're only doing the military we've not even you know i was assuming it was both the military and civilian this is just the path for civilians that was the military you separate this by country you see that about half 2.7 million were polish 700,000 were soviets followed by hungary and 17 other countries most of them what did the what did the polls do to the to the germans back then broken down another it's way about half of the so 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 high over a million died in auschwitz most were killed in the gas chamber Others died from starvation, exhaustion, disease, and other forms of execution. The second most deadly camp was Treblinka, which was exclusively an extermination camp, set up to look like a train station. Mobile killing groups killed 1.4 million Jews. Like... Look at this picture. I'm guessing this is a real picture. I don't know, it might not be, but I'm guessing this is real. Even if it's not real, this is basically what this is like the embodiment of World War II. Look at this picture. How is this soldier going to go back home to his wives and kids after this? Like how how do you mentally go back home and function after this step? There's this woman and it's like she's ho he's holding a child. Put the I gas chambers. Men were killed first to reduce the risk of breathing. Evil minds. Oh, so there are even other guns in the picture. Okay, there's another dead woman there, or a dead man. And that woman was just one out of millions. The Holocaust also includes non-Jewish deaths. Between 130,000 to 500,000 Roma, then called gypsies, were killed. The numbers are disputed. About a quarter million people with disabilities were killed. Homosexuals, Catholics, other groups were also exterminated, but their numbers were relatively small. They were Some basically playing God. They were like on God mode. Undesirable, undesirable, undesirable. Under German occupation. Some of it were sent to the gas chambers at Auschwitz. When you combine civilian and military deaths, over 16% of the total Polish population died in World War II, which is the highest percentage of 16% of a population but not in the a country. In the Soviet Union again tops that list, losing at least as many civilians as it did soldiers. The Soviet Some Union again, the highest numbers of civilians killed. The Soviet Union was the siege of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. German forces surrounded Leningrad before civilians... I'm actually getting a headache watching this. I didn't expect the video to be like this. Very informative. One and a half million people died as a result, mostly from starvation, mostly civilians. Stalin's cruelty towards his own people is partly responsible for these numbers. He often didn't allow civilians to evacuate from cities, thinking it would cause the soldiers protecting them to fight harder. Dictators. About a million Soviets died in Stalin's own regimes. Dictators only. <sighs> Just about every country suffered civilian losses, especially countries who weren't. While many died as a result of so-called collateral damage, the biggest numbers occurred when there was no accident. Civilians were exterminated. Purposely fired upon the bomb, used as human shields, or intentionally deprived of food. The intentional killing of civilians was done by most warring parties, including the United Kingdom and the United States. The United Kingdom was spared of a land invasion, but still lost 60,000 civilians, largely from German air raids or blitzes, often directed at civilian population centers. The UK did the same to German cities at a much greater magnitude, causing about 10 times the number of deaths. But most German civilian deaths came from the ground at the late stage of the war. When the Nazi regime bodies, collapsed, bodies the civilians everywhere. living in occupied regions had to desperately flee from the advancing Soviet army. Rapes were widespread, and death estimates ranged from How? 600 Obviously. to 3 million. Like, just, I imagine the women in this period with these men all around. You know, it's war. Like, 
with a gun in your hand, you can basically ask anyone to do anything. You can steal from anyone, rape anyone. Everyone suffered one way or the other. Even if you didn't carry a gun. Let's step back and see where we are with the pillars. We just counted about 20 million civilian deaths in Europe. If you add this to the European military deaths we already covered, it brings us to over 40 million. 41 million already. That's then we 41 have the million people that died. Here we see the vast majority of military deaths in Asia, looking from China and Japan. I, I, you see, once again, I forgot. There's also the Pacific, the Asians also. Of those that fought in Asia, that's like another group of people, the people again that died. And we already have 41 million here. On the civilian side, about 6 million deaths from China, Indonesia, Korea, Indochina, and the Philippines can be attributed to Japanese war crimes, which are sometimes compared to the Nazi atrocities due to the sheer scale of the cruelty. China had the second highest death count after the Soviet Union. And like the Soviets, the Chinese government demonstrated a stunning willingness to sacrifice its own people. Chinese nationalists opened the dike at the Yellow River, hoping the flood would halt the Japanese advance. Half a million Chinese civilians or more were killed, which is two or three times the number who died in all countries in the 2004 Asian tsunamis. But the invasion of China only cost Japan 200,000 soldiers. Most were killed fighting the US and allies in the Pacific War. A significant portion of Japanese civilian deaths were caused by American firebombing and the two nuclear attacks. Contrary to official U.S. statements, these airstrikes were directed at civilian populations, not military targets. When you add all the deaths outside of Europe, it brings us to a grand total of 70 million for the war, give or take depending on who's counting and what civilian deaths get included. More people died in World War II than in any other war in history. For comparison, here are 20 or so of the very worst wars and atrocities we have on record. Some of these are more of atrocities than wars, but we've seen how that distinction can get blurry. Some of these spanned across centuries. World War II had the highest body count, and it all happened in just six years. Nothing tops World War II. The world's population has grown significantly since the earliest atrocities on this list. More people died fighting in World War II than in all the wars since. And again, we can't forget about world population, which has almost tripled since World War II. If we scale these numbers to show deaths in proportion to world population, showing the likelihood that a person on Earth dies in battle, the downward trend becomes even more pronounced. Now, this isn't to infer anything about why this trend is occurring. That's a discussion for another day. You can now interact with this chart to explore what conflicts are behind the totals. Now bear in mind we're just looking at battle deaths here, not civilian deaths, but those two are in decline. Peace is a difficult thing to measure. It's a bit like counting the people who didn't die in wars that never happened. We give such importance to the word peace, but we don't tend to it's notice an it when it occurs word. or report on it. Sometimes it takes reminding ourselves of how terrible war once was to see the peace that has been growing around. Of course, this trend may not be and it's oh, not clear how I guess that was when the video was made. The November. Okay. Eight. But the longer the long peace grows, the more significant it becomes. I don't mind, as long as there's so peace. So watching the news doesn't make us feel hopeful about where things are heading. Watching the numbers might. I could watch these numbers forever. As long as there is peace. I don't want to die for another person's crazy ideology. Wow. Neil Halloran. Thank you, Neil Halloran. This this is not what I expected, you know, from this video at all. If you'd like to support this project and encourage new episodes, please follow us using one of the options below. And consider paying the suggested ticket price for today's show. Thank you very much. This was a nice video. Uh, thank you. Um, 
let me check the person who suggested this video thank you Vagoman, for this um for this um suggestion it's one of those videos that you didn't think you needed but you actually do you know the people whose lives were lost they they, they aren't they, they aren't just statistics they're not just numbers to attach to a couple of sentences they're actually they were actually people just like you and i and we don't have any i don't think we have any um what's the what's the word i don't think we have any advantages you know you know ahead of them or, or maybe except for the fact that we are alive but as human beings there isn't really much difference this could have happened to any of us if we had been born in that timeline so um nice video and the editing is so nice i'm jealous i'm not even good with editing i'm not exactly that there i'm not exactly good but this editing was flawless i don't even have to be a master mind in editing to know that this edition was flawless it explains everything well thanks for hanging out with me this long guys and um please guys if you enjoyed this video leave a like and also comment on videos you want me to react to and um subscribe please guys subscribe if you're new and i will see you in the next video so have a nice day guys bye